Yes, students, in this chapter, I'm going to tell you about Yeats' poetic journey. Yeats was born in Ireland, but for the greater part of his life, he lived in England. He wrote in English language and was influenced by English poets like Shelley, like um, Spencer, the, the Pre-Raphaelites, etc. But by his birth and temperament, he was the poet of Irish tradition. Yet his later poetry grows out of the earlier poetry. The growth and evolution was achieved by a process of a slow and easy transition and not abruptly. Yet's poetry has a beginning, a middle and an end like a Greek drama. It is only for the sake of convenience that we may divide his poetry into four parts. Early poetry. Early poetry and its themes. Yet early poetry, the poetry of Celtic twilight period, is frankly escapist. It is pre-Raphaelite and romantic. It, it, it has a Shelleyan fluidity and Keatsian richness of color. From the ordinary world of harsh realities, the poet escapes into the dream world of Irish legend, into the dream world of Irish mythology, of Irish folklore. Yet has made its fairy world a symbol of the imaginative world of rest and peace. The Lake Isle of in Innisfree was written in this period. Let's talk about the style, the poetic style during this period. In this period, the style is easy and languid. The influence of romantic poets can be seen clearly. It is highly colored. There is profuse use of imagery and word pictures, but these are merely decorative. Yet began a late romantic and pre-Raphaelite with the additional advantage of contact with the Irish mythological tradition and folk culture. Now comes the middle phase and the return to reality. Various causes combined to draw Jets from his ivory tower and make him a great poet, such as his frustration in love, such as his bitter experience in politics and his involvement in public controversies. The turn of the century saw Yeats transformed into a great 20th century realistic poet. His later poetry is characterized by stark, naked realism, even brutality and coarseness, and with masculine vigor and force. His dreams are gone and he, he has come closer to life and reality and is conscious of blood and mire and degradation of human beings. Now let's talk about the letter poetry. His best, his richest and most complex poetry was produced when he was over 50 years of age. Now he comes closer to life. Now he has succeeded in creating new political myths out of contemporary myths and events. His attitude to life is complex. He wants to escape from the blood 
and mire an inevitable degradation of the body and see its safe anchorage in Byzantium. Byzantium is the symbolic world for him where he, he takes refuge from the realities of the world. But his lust for life is equally intense and, is, and he is eager to live his life over again. Now let's talk about uh, his later phase. This is a phase of disillusionment. The poetry, this period poetry was written after a few years of the poet. Uh, um, the tone is intensely tragic, and the and the ironic, disdainful gray gaiety is only the mask to hide the frustrations. He has reached up to the fullness of his powers. So in this way we see 